Hey there. Welcome to React Holiday Day 13. So excited. Um, today we're going to talk about something that is a little bit um, different, but very important. And we're going to talk about concurrent mode. And we're, it's, it's kind of hard for me to explain what exactly concurrent mode is, but it's a slightly different way of rendering what you've given React. Now, unless you have a just mega performant React app already, um, you might not be able to see some of the, the differences right away, um, but it is helpful to know kind of what some of those core differences are as they apply to suspense, which is what we're learning about now. Um, so I did want to cover it and um, just give you an opportunity to see what it will do for us. Um, this is not gonna be just kind of one video on this, so it'll probably be at least two, uh, maybe three or four. So uh, we're just gonna try to tackle this one piece at a time um, and let's dive in. So first of all, it is today, uh, today is day 13, so we'll change that up. Now, when we hit refresh on this, um, we can see just for a split second, the um, looking for Pokemon, right? Now, I would like to make that a little bit longer so that we can see the difference that concurrent mode is going to give us. So I'm gonna add a dependency um, this is not something that you'll regularly want to add to your app. Uh, it's just something for um, demonstration purposes, um, but it's called Sleep Promise. Now we're gonna use Sleep Promise to um, make our uh, resources load slower. Um, again, this is just so we can see what's happening and see the difference that concurrent mode is going to make in suspense. So we're going to import uh, sleep from sleep promise. And after that, we will call uh, add into our chain another then um, sleep. And we'll let's do, see how 500 feels. Um, we might have to reload this. OK, 500 still feels a little fast. Um, Let's make it 750. Okay, that that seems decent enough for us to kind of get a sense of what's happening. So we're waiting now 750 milliseconds at least for this promise to fully resolve and for the app to render the list. That is good for our purposes. Now, what I wanna talk about next is um, right here. So at the very root of our application, we are rendering using the react dom dot render uh, method. And this is our old faithful friend. We've been using this for a very long time. I think it changed a little bit around version 13 or 14 maybe. And, um, you know, moving into react dom versus just on react and, um, it will likely change again. So we will be using in this, um, to opt into concurrent mode, this is the regular mode that it's always been, the default mode or sync mode or whatever it ends up being called. Um, but we can opt into concurrent mode um, like so. We'll use react dom create root. And here is where we will put our element. So we'll delete that from there. We'll say create root. And then we'll call render on that with the application. Slightly different, um, instead of just calling render and giving both arguments, we're going to call create root to set up our root, um, which is ju just this. And uh, then we'll call render on that and give it the component. Getting an error, okay, that's just because I was changing things. So let's refresh that and it should go away. Cool. Now you might notice a slight difference. So let me render that again. It stays white for a lot longer and then it renders the whole thing. So we don't see the loading state at all, which is fascinating. So let me, um, let's test that out. Let's see if we can make it last even longer. This will be up to almost four seconds and see what happens. So now we're waiting a really long time, but when the page loads, all of that data is already there. We don't see the locating Pokemon or loading Pokemon or whatever it is. Now that we're in concurrent mode, this suspense component actually gains some capabilities, which is really interesting. By default now, it is not going to render anything until that stuff, 
the, the, all this data is resolved. That resource has resolved. We have a new prop though in concurrent mode on the suspense component that we can use to basically opt out of that default behavior waiting for the data. So um, that is called max duration. An interesting thing about max duration in default mode or sync mode is that effectively it defaults to zero. So if we want the behavior that we had before, we can just put max duration zero. And you can see for 750 milliseconds, we see that loading Pokemon, um, we see the rest of this document, loading Pokemon until the list comes in and then it fills in. But we don't have to stick with zero. So if we wanted to, we could put this up to, if we put this up, this threshold of max duration past a second, then it would wait one second before, um, before rendering or showing the page, in which case that 750 milliseconds that we're delaying has already passed and um, we will never see that spinner. So where does this come into play? When we had it at zero, or when we had it in default mode, um, there was a split second where we were showing loading Pokemon. And it, it might be hard to see on YouTube, but um, even when we didn't have the sleep in here, just the latency of making that request takes a split second and you see that loader. Now, that's not an ideal experience, especially since it might take 300 milliseconds for a user to even interpret that they're waiting for anything to load. So, we can put this at like 250 milliseconds and you can see the data comes back quickly, but it's not under our, it, it comes back faster than our threshold. So we don't see the loading. We just see Pokemon come in because it's faster than our threshold. So that is what you get with concurrent mode. You get this additional prop that you can use on suspense um, called max duration, which allows you to control in a very fine grained way um, how the user experiences loading states. And this is really the magic that the React team has been building up to uh, in the fiber architecture, in async concurrent rendering mode, um, and suspense. So this is a really powerful thing. Um, tomorrow we'll see how we can even split things so that we can have fine grain control over every request. Um, but today, um, explore that. It's a pretty simple transformation for the most part. Um, basically, you just have to change this up a little bit to use create root and render um, on that and um, use suspense to um, play around with that. Um, and again, if you want, you can use the sleep promise package to um, give you a, a few extra milliseconds to actually see what changes are taking place. Uh, I hope that's helpful. This is very exciting. As a UI developer, I'm just ecstatic about this. I think this is gonna really improve the experiences that we ship to users, and uh, I think it will for you too. So uh, have fun, hit me up with any questions, and I'll see you tomorrow.